Hey everybody, this is Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews. Um, today I'm going to be giving you a list of my top 10 best ongoing fantasy series. These are all going to be adult fantasy series. I don't read any YA. Um, and if you're anything like me, you love ongoing fantasy series. Um, I know I certainly do because, you know, I love being part of the hype of a new book coming out. I like being part of the community, being able to talk about a book fresh. I mean, I like all sorts of books. I like to read books um, in completed series um, because you know they're done. But more than anything, I love to jump into these series and just being involved in that in that big hype that goes on. So let's get right into it. So at number 10, we have a big series, and that is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. Um, I'm a big Mistborn fan. I do certainly like the first era more than the second era. If you're not familiar, um, these books are coming out in an interesting style. You have... The first three books in the series, the original Mistborn series, were about this major event that happened um, involving um, like gods being created, um, legends being made. Then there was a break of, and there was three books. The next, uh, it's it's eventually it's not going to be four books. There's three books been released, and the fourth book is going to come out in later in 2022. And this is a books that happen like, I want to say like a hundred years later and technology has advanced. These legends are in pe- fresh in people's minds, um, but they're fading away. And now you have these people that technology is advancing. It's kind of more of like a kind of wild west feel to it. When the first one was like true fantasy, old school fantasy. Um, and when that's done, the next series after that, I... Um, I know that there's going to be another trilogy, and I, I don't quite know exactly what that is going to be, but I know the last trilogy is going to be, like, far, far in the future. I, I almost feel like it's, like, outer space type stuff. Um, but it's this idea of, like, legends occurring and then being something that happened in the past and being able to play off those themes of the same world. It's a really cool concept. Unfortunately... Personally, I find the first trilogy is way better than the second group. It's a very different style. He's wrote a completely different type of book. Um, In the first books, it was kind of traditional fantasy. The second one is like this kind of trying to be kind of more funny, Wild West kind of feel to it. Much shorter books. Um, I want to say that they're probably like half the length of the first trilogy size books. Um, a lot of people love the second series just as much, if not more, than the first. And while I don't love the second series, I am highly invested in it. And I'm highly invested in Mistborn in general. So the first day that uh, The Lost Metal, which is that fourth book, comes out, I'll be reading it. Uh, but I'm really, more than anything, looking forward to that third era beginning to see if it gets back to the um, to the fantastic nature that the first one was. Um, the, the first series is one of my favorite series of all time. Um, I thought that the the twists are incredible. You're going to get your mind blown. Do not go into this book reading anything about it. If you get spoiled, it is going to majorly ruin something because you're in for a treat, especially in that third book in the trilogy. Get ready for it. Um, it there's a reason that it is one of the most highly recommended fantasy series. Um, number nine. Um, this is more of a uh, of a sci-fi series. It's the only sci-fi that I have on here. And this is The Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. Uh, the M- Murderbot Diaries is a bunch of short stories. And I, I don't want to say like ultra short, but they're like probably like 100 pages of an average. They're more than that, but the pages are very large. And so it, probably like in the average book, it's about 100 pages. Um, and they're about this robot who has removed its governor module in its head so that it can make its own decisions. It is a security bot um, that has it ended up murdering a bunch of people. And it got recommissioned, and nobody knows that it has removed this module so that it can be thinking on its own. Um, it sounds like a serious book, but it's not. Uh, Murderbot is a jokester. He is very cynical and shares a lot of these like human-like qualities that a lot of people have. He's um, he's very antisocial. He hates being around humans, but he has to act like a robot that doesn't have this freedom of will. So it's this fun concept. Um, a lot of people say, and I'm one of them, that Murderbot, um, you connect more with this robot than you do in a lot of humans in other books. Um, he's got these really funny traits where like all he wants to do is be by himself and watch TV. Um, he loves watching TV 
And it's fun watching him get involved in these messes where he has to get involved with humans, has to go on these security missions. Um, there's an overarching plot. Um, I feel like the books are all getting too similar to each other, though, as we get later on in the series. I'm not quite done. I have two more books to go in the, in the series. I think there's six out so far. Um, and I've, I've read four of them. But more are being planned. I think another one's probably going to be out this year. She really, uh, Martha Wells releases these rather quickly, but they're fun reads, um, especially the first couple. Um, but there's a reason this series is extremely well-liked. The one thing I will say that is not awesome is the price of these books. These are normal priced books, um, even the ebook versions. And they're short. They're way short. You can get all of these books and ram them together, and it's the size of one like long fantasy book. But you're going to spend 80 or 90 bucks. That's way too much. Um, if you're going to read the series, I highly recommend you finding it at the library. Um, if your library doesn't have it, hopefully you can request it and they'll get them for you. Um, that's how I, I read all my books from the library, or pretty much all of them. Um, and I don't think I would have read this if I would have had to pay normal price. Uh, so just beware of the price tag. Number eight, uh, The King's Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, super popular books. He's only released two of them. They're both extremely high, highly regarded. I very much loved these books. On a reread, I didn't like them as much, um, but on an initial read, they were wonderful to me. I read them um, back when I didn't read a ton. I read them on my honeymoon, and I busted through them both. Like super, every spare moment I had on the beach, I was burning through these books. Um, they're... A little bit more YA, uh, they're not, but they're a little bit more on that kind of like teenager angsty, going to a magic school. Um, I don't want to ruin really anything about these books because you really just need to read it for yourself if you haven't yet. I don't know. I feel like everybody who is watching this video has probably read uh, The King's Killer Chronicle. Um, the problem with this series is that it's one of a few series and you're going to read. Um, um, the other two are higher up on this list that I'll get to that people don't really have a ton of faith that the third and last book is going to come out. Um, Patrick Rothfuss has repeatedly said that this is going to be a three-book series. Um, it's been a really long time since he's he's released that second book, and he has not really made a lot of progress um, at coming out with that third book. He's not. It doesn't seem like it's like immediately on the horizon. He did read like a prologue to it recently. Um, I know that he's been struggling with some like I don't know if it you want to call it like mental health issues, but like at least like self confidence issues with getting that third book out. He's a perfectionist. He doesn't want to release this until it's like extremely good. Um, I like that. I don't want him to rush the book. Um, I wish it was out, but I'm patient. I have time. There's tons of fantasy books I could be reading. I don't need to like get on him and say like I'm mad at you now for not coming up with this book. I'm sure he wants to release this book more than anybody wants him to. Um, you know, but there's a lot of cynical fans out there that claim that he's doing this to milk fame and that if that, after that last book comes out, he'll do decrease in popularity. I don't buy into that at all. Um, you know, it's just hard. It's really hard. And I feel like he's boxed himself in a little bit because the plot, it's a really well done book. Maybe the best thing about it is the writing quality is probably higher than any of the books on this on this list. He writes so beautifully. You connect with these characters so well. Um, but the plot hasn't moved a ton and there's a lot that has to happen in that third book because the way this is structured is that it's kind of like he's, uh, the main character at the beginning of the book is the present. And then he goes back telling a story about how he got to that point. So you know how it ends. Um, and there's a lot of room to go. And so who knows how he's going to get there. Maybe it'll be one of those like ginormous books that comes out, um, to really fill in that gap. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, um, and, I, and I highly encourage you to read this series. Uh, number seven is The Burning by Evan Winter. Um, I believe this is going to be a four-book series. Two have come out so far, um, and they both were, uh, you know, amazing books. I think I gave um, them 4.5 stars out of five, maybe a five for the second book. Um, this is a series that I'm fully confident is going to get released. Um, the author is really you know, getting through these rather quickly. They have not been out for a terribly long amount of time. I think just like, I think the first one came out a few years ago. Um, they do this really fun thing that I haven't experienced in a fantasy book before and that it's um, all of the characters um, are black. They It's got a lot of African themes to it. And it's really fun reading a book that has um, 
that that plays that dynamic because you don't see that a lot in fantasy. Fantasy is a um, very white dominated. Um, really tries you know a lot of fantasy does the playing off medie- uh, medieval themes with fantasy elements in them, but this book it doesn't do that. Um, you know it's got you know dragons are cool. I don't want to sound like a little kid, but I love books with a good dragon story, um, and the dragons are very prevalent in the series. Um, it's got you know a similar feel to it where you know it's this character who beats the odds where society has set them up to be a loser and they're not, they're the best and they have to prove it to the world. But, you know, it's a very common theme in a fantasy book for a character to rise up and become greater than what society tells them they can be. I, I feel like I shouldn't like common tropes, but that is one that I really do enjoy. I love a good story that involves a cool school. Um, I love that sort of theme to it where you have characters kind of leveling up which happens here it's not a progression fantasy i don't think you would call it that um but you know the characters get more powerful and more powerful um and i the, I, the plot is extremely compelling so um certainly jump into this series if you if any of that rings true to you and i'm very confident that these books are going to get completed um number six is gentlemen bastards by scott lynch Gentlemen Bastards is the second on my list of books that I do not know are going to get completed. Um, the author has written three books. It's been a long time since that third book came, came out. And I don't think this series is supposed to wrap up even after four books. You know, it doesn't... There is an overarching plot that is going on. But the beauty of these books is the individual nature of them. They could, they, they w- you wouldn't be able to read these individually, but they really do read as individual books. Um, it's, a, it's a story of the world's greatest thief. And he starts off as a child, and, you know, it does some time jumping between him as a child and him currently, mostly current. He's got this band of elite thieves, and it's fun, it's hysterical, it's, it's somehow both hysterical and very dark. Um, it's got a very fun uh, dynamic between playing between those two. In the first book, it is all about pulling off an epic heist. And the twists are amazing. There is a... Um, some of the most shocking moments in a fantasy book happen in this book. Um, and one of the best endings to a fantasy book happens in this first book. The first book in the series is one of my all-time favorite books. The quality of the next two have declined, but I still love them. The, when, when you have, for me, one of the greatest books ever written, of course the next two are probably going to be below that, but they're good. Um, the next book is a book really about a, um, like, they become like pirates. That sounds like kind of, uh, you know, hokey. It's not. It plays really well. Another heist. Um, the third book is kind of about rigging an election. And it's not as good as the other two, mostly because the ending isn't awesome. And it just kind of gets rushed. But wonderful book. And I am extremely excited about reading the the next book in the series. I know that um, it's not ranked at the highest, but my internal hype level for for these books increases over time. And so I uh, I can't wait for the next Gentleman Bastards book to come out. Um, and so if you like a darker story, this is a wonderful book to read. Um, so read that first book. If you don't like it, you're not going to like the series. Um, but if you love the first book like me, there's a good chance you're going to end up liking the whole thing and get really addicted to it. So moving on to number five, we have The Blood Sword Saga by John Gwen. John Gwen is turning into my favorite author. Um, every book I've read by his is a five out of five. Um, he's the only author that I've read that has written three or more books um, that have continually got fives. I've read The Faithful and the Fallen by him, four book series, all fives. I've read the both of the Blood Sworn Sagas, both fives. I have not quite um, dug into Of Blood and Bone. It's a trilogy that takes place after the Blood Sworn Saga, or after the uh, uh, Faithful and the Fallen. I, I'm reading it right now, uh, but I like it a lot so far. And... The Blood and Sword Saga is this Viking-inspired story. It is intense. 
The action is high paced. This is a high octane fantasy book. Um, it's got the a central premise to it is like enormous mythical beasts that have died and but are kind of coming back. And I love a story with bigger than life characters and bigger than life animals. Uh, I love that the direction that he's gone with this. His battle scenes are the best that any writer can do in fantasy. And I can't say enough about how engaging his battle scenes are. And he's he throws them in heavily in this, in this series. I'm not a big fan of battle scenes. And he writes them so vividly that you get caught up in these moments. You're there with the character. You're sweating with these characters. You can't wait to see what happens. And, you know, I don't want to ruin anything about this book. I would go into it really blind. Um, I wouldn't re like listen to any non even non spoiler reviews of these books, um, because you don't want to get something like this that's so beautifully written ruined for you at all. So moving on to number four, we have uh, the most popular series on this entire list: A Song of Ice and Fire. And this is the last on my group of books that I don't know will ever come out. Uh, the author has famously, George R. R. Martin, has written uh, five books, and the there's supposed to be seven, and it's been a really long time since that fifth book has come out. I um, A Song of Ice and Fire rekindled my love for fantasy. I read them multiple times before I branched off into other fantasy, and I have these such positive memories of it, and I don't think that my love for the series is just because it rekindled it. If I were to read them blind today, I would have very similar feelings. He rewrote modern fantasy and inspired so many different authors that I love. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many authors that I have read that openly say that they are inspired by George R. R. Martin's writing. Everyone knows the series. I don't need to go into it a lot of depth, but the ability for him to tell an amazing twist that you didn't see coming that is fair is awesome. His ability to kill off major characters is awesome. Uh, you know, I love being surprised as a reader. I, you know, I do still like books that don't surprise me, that you can kind of see the plot going. Uh, the next book on the series is going to be one of those. You're not going to get that surprised in the next series, but in this one, you will. Um, the, the quality dipped noticeably in the fourth and fifth books, though. I still liked them a lot. I probably would have rated them higher had I not loved the first three so much. Um, but, it, it, you know, it's hard to rate books uh, in general when you have others to compare it to. And when the first three are so good, it, it's hard to live up to that quality. But it was a, a, a knockdown. And, and part of the problem with George R. R. Martin is that he doesn't plan his books out like a lot of other authors. Part That, that makes them, in some ways, uh, very good. He gets to come up with ideas in the moment. He gets to tell these vivid stories that are inspirational to him when he's writing them. But, you know, this guy could really do with outlining a series before he gets into it because he ends up in these boxes. Uh, he, he he ended up, you know, planning on, I think, writing four books. And now it's seven. You know, it's always dangerous to do that as, a, as an author. You know, you, that certainly happens. Fantasy is very famous for authors not really able to wrap up a series. And he's like the poster child for it. They're, it's getting so branching that it's now following so many different characters, it's difficult to see how it's going to come back together. And I desperately hope that it doesn't do what the what the show did, uh, which was a very, very poor ending. I, I wish I didn't watch the show so I could get surprised by the book ending, which I'm sure will be better, but some similarities, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going to now move to number three, and this is Cradle by Will White. Uh, this is a... Um, the only real progression fantasy have I have on this on this list. Progression fantasy, if you're not familiar with it, is something that is I think it's kind of popular in Japanese culture, but it's like this video gamey feel to it where characters are almost literally leveling up as they move along. They're getting more powerful and more powerful every book. And while they may have some setbacks in individual books, by the end of a book they will be at a greater place than when they started the book. There's no surprises in this book. Um, well, I, I take that back. Uh, the last book had a major surprise that you kind of, uh, if you're really reading into it or into the culture of the book, you might have kind of had a theory that maybe that was going to happen. But nonetheless, 
it was amazing how long the setup was for this. Uh, and to shock you so much as a reader in a series that hasn't been shocking you up until that point was a lot of wonderful um, planning by Will White. Uh, these are like crack. They, they People call this a cra a crackle instead of cradle because you will just devour these. If you're into them, you'll read these rather short books in a couple days. Uh, I planned on reading this series over the course of like five or six months. I read a lot of different series at the same time, but I totally threw out my to-be-read list and I read these all back to back to back. Um, I want to say there's like seven or eight books already. And I think there's going to be a total of... I think there's like three or four more books that are going to get get released. This is a series, though, where you have to read a few books to know if you're going to be into it or not. If you give up after the first book, you've done yourself a disservice because not only do they get better, um, he gets better as a writer, but the scope of the story starts expanding. And you don't really get to see the whole world and where the story is going until the end of the third book. So if you're going to read the series, don't be discouraged if you didn't love the first book. Read the first three, and if you don't love it after that point, give it up. Um, but I, I, I suspect you're probably going to be uh, really into it, especially if you um, if you like video games uh, at all. This story might appeal to you more than normal. I'm a big video game guy. I always have been, so it really does appeal to me. Number two on this list is one that very few people are going to have on their top ten list, let alone number two. And this is The Five Warrior Angels by Brian Lee Durfee. Uh, this series has not popped off yet. There's very few reviews, um, very few ratings of this on Goodreads, uh, and very, very low sales. I can't get over how amazing this series is. I just got done reading the second book. It's only two books long, uh, and it's only going to be a trilogy. So to be this high on my list with, with only two books coming out, this is a special book. Both of these books are in my top list of books that have ever been released. The second book is maybe my favorite book I've ever read, uh, which is crazy for me to say. I don't think it recency bias is playing into me saying that, but it does everything. I highly encourage you to go back and look at my review uh, of both these books. The first one is The Forgetting Moon. Uh, the second one is The Blackest Heart, I believe it is, and... Gosh, these are dark books that not only surprise you as they go along, but it does this amazing take on religious prophecy that is better than anything I've ever read. It, you have this enormous moment that happens before the books begin. Good versus evil. Classic good versus evil. And, uh, you know, good prevailed, and now time has gone on. But since that moment, there's been divisions. The church that follows the main guy that saved the world fractured, where the church kind of took over one part of the world, and the son of the main guy takes over another part. And for hundreds of years, they're battling back and forth and taking over land from each other and creating these bitter divides. You don't know who is good or bad. I don't know that there is a good or bad. But they each have different um, ideas about uh, about what happened. And they each have their own prophecies. And normally in a book that has a prophecy element to it, usually it's pretty black and white. You have a prophecy and it gets fulfilled. Um, in a really good prophecy book, you'll have a prophecy, a major twist, and then that twist will get revealed. In this one... It goes back and forth, constantly playing with this prophecy. You don't know what's real, what's not real. Um, and it keeps the reader on their toes in a really fair way. And it tells a very grim, dark story. I like dark books. I like light books too, but I really like a good dark book. And this is right up there. Uh, it's like a heavy metal fantasy book, if, if that's a thing. This is the, the poster child for it. So... Uh, the third book, it's supposed to come out later this year. I don't know if it is. Um, I know that originally it was supposed to come out at the end of last year, so it got delayed, and I haven't heard any news about it coming out right away. But I think it's off at the editor, so hopefully it comes out this year, and I will devour this book the moment that I get it. Um, and number one, uh, if you, you probably know what this is because it's the only obvious one that's missing from my list. 
And this is Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second Brandon Sanderson I have on my list, the first being Mistborn. And I, I, don't, I can't say enough positive things about Stormlight Archive. And while I may like the individual Five Warrior Angels books a little bit more than I like Stormlight Archive, I have faith that Stormlight Archive is only getting better. And the story is about to hit such an apex with this fifth book that's going to come out uh, later this year. I think later this year, maybe next year. Because Brandon Sanderson is the opposite of George R. R. Martin. Brandon Sanderson plans his books out. He knows everything that's going to happen in every one of his books. He's going to write 10 of them. They're very well organized. Uh, and they all hit these major moments that make you chilled up, make me legitimately cry. I don't cry in books. He's the only author that really makes me do that from both excitement and sadness. Um, the set pieces that he does are incredible. The endings to each of his books, uh, people call it like a Sander Lanch because everything comes together. Uh, the only author that does that better, in my opinion, is uh, Steven Erickson, my favorite author in the Malasm series, which is not on this list because it's uh, it's done. And, or it, it at least the, um, it's mostly done. And he finished the main series. His uh, friend is writing other books and he's writing like an offshoot book, but the main book of the Fallen is done. And the, but Stormlight Archive is split up into two different five book arcs and the fifth arc is coming to a close. So to know that he ends each book on a major blow up, I suspect that this fifth book is all going to be bigger than life and ma major set piece followed by major set piece. Um, I love everything about this book. I can't say anything negative about them. I've given three of the four five out of fives. I gave the uh, third book a four and a half out of five. It had a couple weaker spots to it, but four out of five is so good to me. I love four, four and a half out of fives. Um, so yeah, my faith is over the moon for Brandon Sanderson as an author in this book in particular. So, yep, yeah, that's my 10. Let me know if I missed anything. And I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks so much.